Mike George, thanks for joining us on the All Night Channel. We're, we're here at the Air Combat Museum in Springfield. I would say for the viewers, while they may not have heard of this, it's actually one of the greatest things to see if you're visiting Springfield or if you live in Springfield. And we hope that this will be one of the ways to raise awareness that it's here. Tell us about what's here at the museum and how how did you come to uh, chart this? Well, there's 18 airplanes here, and uh, some of them are under restoration. Most of them fly or will fly. And uh, we've been here since 1990. And uh, we currently occupy 13,000 square feet, and we're adding on. We're going to be at 33,000 square feet. That should be done by no later than October, November. And how did this start? You've been here since 1990, but as I understand it, it's what, your own interest in yes. aviation? So, a uh, long time ago when I, when I was trying to save money to buy one of these, some of these airplanes, uh, there, there were a lot of um, uh, issues to get to see them. And uh, so I vowed that if I ever was able to buy the airplanes, I would make sure people could see them and come in and get within five, ten feet of them. Before we get into some of the history and other things, if people want to come, are there standard hours of operation? How do they arrange to come? It's usually best to come between nine and four. So if you come at four, the, the guys that work here leave at five. They get here at eight, and they need to get started in the morning. Uh, because of the TSA and the COVID, you have to bang on the door. So we're here Monday through Friday. and. Uh, we're getting a, a large doorbell system, but the problem with the doorbell system is if they don't hear it, then the people can't get in. So you do have to pound on the door at this point. Uh, it's TSA has to have the door locked. The, the planes that are here, and we have right behind you a North American P-51 Mustang. So this was a World War II fighter plane, I believe. Yes. And we have machine guns, I think. Six, or uh, right on the wings there we can see. Yeah, it carried uh, 650 caliber machine guns and uh, this airplane was actually uh, built in June of 44 and it was shipped over to Europe for the last months of the war. And so it was there, but we don't know what it did while it was there. The, are all the planes in here, are they military aircraft or what, why, why did you select the planes that you have to be in the museum? Well, so as an example, most people, most everyone considers the Mustang one of the main reasons we were able to win World War II. Um, behind us is the Corsair, behind you rather, is the Corsair. And uh, that was the Navy's airplane that, that was also more modern and did very well. And then we have a Project uh, P-40, which was the early uh, fighter that you would see at uh, Pearl Harbor in the movies. Uh, it was one of the ones that was uh, filling our Air Force, Army Air Corps at the time. Uh, it was the number one fighter. And so we have all three of those. The Corsair behind the camera here, mm -hmm. uh, was the wings fold up. I believe that was probably then used on an aircraft carrier, and the yes. wings would fold up so they could get more planes on? So the Mustang was in World War II. The Corsair flew off an aircraft carrier in Korea and the P-40 was shot down in 1944 in North Africa. Wow. Yeah. The one you have here was shot down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you come to have that then? Uh, word of mouth. So I found it in Louisiana, and uh, it was simply uh, everybody that's involved knows everybody, and I found somebody I didn't know, and he had it. How rare are these planes, and how hard is it to find them? You know, we, we have the... The, I, the stories we've all heard about someone finding some valuable old car in a barn somewhere. Mm -hmm. Do you find them, planes like this in a similar vein, that they're kind of tucked away somewhere? Uh, there's a publication like Hemmings for Cars called uh, Trade-A-Plane. Uh, but typically, anything that's listed on Trade-A-Plane um, is because they couldn't sell it through word of mouth. So most of the, the uh, uh, better airplanes are simply word of mouth. And if they're listed on trade plane, that's because they didn't sell through word of mouth before. So the Corsair, to get it, I had to um, follow the gentleman uh, and see as he was getting older when he was ready to sell it. As we stand here, it's pretty crowded. You have to duck under wings. As you expand, 
the facility here, are you going to add more planes, or are you yes. just going to spread out the ones you have? No. We had seven hangars. We're going to one. So we have three other, four other airplanes that aren't allowed to be in here because of the size, and then uh, uh, car collection that's going to be in here as well. And when, you, when people come in, and, I mean, you know what you know and the public sees, what are some of the planes that are either the most valuable, as you would know them, the most rare, and what do the public tend to focus on? Well, the cats. <laughs> the public focuses on. So we have two cats. They're micers, and they're very, very friendly, and uh, people focus on the cats. That's the truth. Uh, so the Corsair is the most valuable, and the, it's just the supply and demand. So it's very low supply, maybe 25 in the world that fly, that fly, and the demand is high. At one point, when before people realized the answer was no, I would get five to seven calls a year, people trying to buy the, buy it. The Mustang, uh, they're pretty much making them new, and the same with the P40. You can pretty much get a, a brand new airplane built. Really? Yeah. Making? Well, there's there's a bunch of places that making like if you uh, uh, crash and you need a new wing, you could send it to two different places, one in California, one in Idaho, and in six months you have a brand new wing. Interesting. Which are the most difficult to fly? Uh, the, the 1928 Stearman is uh, fairly difficult. There, there are different ways of calling difficult. What I call difficult me is mean they, they don't do what you tell them to do. Uh, so the Stearman doesn't do what you tell it to do very well. Uh, the Mustang is only difficult because if you make a mistake, uh, it's uh, extremely dangerous. Um, it, it'll crash if you just pull the flaps up too quick or if you uh, uh, give it full power uh, at a slow speed. It, it, you're, that's it. You're done. And uh, But all the planes in here fly or will fly? I yes. Guess. Yeah. Everything here flies. The... The uh, 1931 fleet will fly hopefully Tuesday, and it hasn't flown since 1953. Wow. Uh, in the last month, uh, one, two, three, four, five of the airplanes have flown just last month. Now, what, what's interesting to me, and I know only a little bit about aviation history, but that, you know, you go back to the Wright brothers, and one of the things that the Wright brothers weren't doing right I mean, they had been bicycle makers. They weren't very good engine makers. They're low horsepower. Low mm -hmm. horsepower. And right. so you had what Curtis come along, who was right. a motorcycle rider. Right. And so he was more of a engine mechanic. Mm -hmm. So I guess what we're seeing here, if, if one wanted to study it, you're seeing a, an evolution in aviation and design, both of the the planes, and we were talking off camera, some of these, a, a number of these, still have canvas wings. Most of them. And then yeah. others have, uh, what, I guess, aluminum? Yes. So uh, the oldest airplane's a 1928 Stearman. Then we have a 1929 Stinson and a 1931 Fleet Model 9, which is one of two that exist. Wow. Then uh, those are all fabric coated, but even the 1996. Um, extra 300, which will, won't be in the central display area once we get the, the building made, because it's not a warbird, but it has canvas on the fuselage. Now, you, you fly all the planes, right? Mm -hmm. You've flown the Mustang. Mm -hmm. how, how fast does this go? Uh, it it trues, true air speeds uh, 318 miles an hour. That's down low. If you went up high, it'd be over 400. I think a lot of people are surprised to hear that World War II era planes could go as fast as 400 miles an hour. Yeah, it, it will actually, in a dive, it'll go uh, uh, 503 wow. in a dive. But straight and level, four, about 400, 350 knots. So is that, the, mo the which is the most fun to fly? And I would imagine if you can do the Mustang, you get into some of these old box airplanes that might be feel like you're yeah. boring and going yeah. five miles an hour. Oh no! It's just the, with the when you take off in a Mustang at 100, and then you fly uh, the older airplanes, and they're off the ground at 40. You're going, oh, I'm off the ground, because you didn't notice it. But uh, the most fun to fly is the P40. Yeah. 
And if so, if people want to come, how much time should they book? Would you an say hour. an hour? Yeah, an hour. Uh, it depends if they if they have an interest, an hour. Uh, if they just want to see them, you know, 30, 40 minutes. Uh, depends on 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 if they ask questions. If they ask questions, it'll be every bit of an hour. And we're we're making this relatively short. What we'd like to do is come back after you yes. reopen and you have all the new. You're you're not crowded in here with all the different all the plants. All dust will be gone. The floors will be clean. Uh, the wall that wall will be removed and the floor painted and LED lights that you can see better. I mean, it's a, a very big uh, expansion. If I can ask one last question, uh, you have hanging from the rafters, what, which I, I asked off camera if that was a a buzz bomb, but you said no, it's an early drone. Yes, yeah, so if you look underneath, you can see uh, an opening. That was for a camera. And then, so in the beginning, it was, uh, you know, to take pictures of the enemy. And then towards the end, it's painted red because its purpose was a target drone. And uh, so that airplane, believe it or not, cost three times more than a Mustang. Wow. Yeah, so the radio controls were as big, uh, probably. Uh, 10 by 15 feet in a trailer to control it and it was launched from a derrick with a rocket assist and then they flew it into a net when they were done. Huh. Yeah, but it was you, the 40s. And, and it's so, worth so much, I guess, why? Because it's so rare, huh? I don't think, it's not worth much at all. Nope. Oh, I thought you, oh, you no. saw in the beginning it cost. It cost 190000 in 1947. Mustang cost 60. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you look at the statistics of how many people we lost in World War II, you'll get an idea why we started to go to drones. I think in D-Day we lost five or 6,000 men in the first hour. On the, on the ground? Yeah. 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 And then the, the, if you look up the statistics for uh, where was the least safe place to be, it was in a bomber. That was the most likely of chance of you not coming back. At sometimes the loss rates were 50%. And with the Navy, at least, sometimes the loss rate was over was a hundred percent. Can't be over, but it was a hundred percent. So you send out uh, 30 planes and none come back, and that happened more than you can think. Remember, Ensign uh, George Gay? He he was the only survivor. All the airplanes got shot down. Well, Mike George, we appreciate you joining us. Sure. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it. Please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.